Everybody's wrong. Rewrote the song. Thoughts become action. Tell me what's happening. Wish your mind wrapped in a wrapped around. Hey guys, in this tutorial I'm going to be showing you how to create this vintage lettering effect within Illustrator. Although it does look quite complex, it's actually very simple and easy to achieve this effect. So let's head over to Illustrator and make a start on it. Okay, so now that we're in Illustrator, you can see that at the top I've got a little colour palette. And basically I've got opposite colours here. So with vintage style, it tends to work quite well when you use opposite colours. So if you had the colour wheel for example, these two would be on opposite sides. And then for the main fill for the actual letter in itself, I've got a fairly neutral colour, which is this sort of beige sort of colour. So first thing we're going to do is create a new layer and we're going to need some type to work with. So I'm just going to write hello in all caps and using command A or control A if you're on PC to highlight it all. I'm going to change the font to BBAS because it's quite a thick font and it looks quite nice for this style. And I'm just going to bump this size up quite a bit. And then I'm going to highlight all the type and then over in the character tab on the right hand side I'm going to come over to where it says tracking and I'm going to change the tracking to 200. And that just adds a little bit of space between each letter and it helps give it that vintage feel to it. So once you have that we're now going to right click, create outlines and then with nothing selected you're going to hold alt and shift, click and drag and that will basically duplicate it and we're going to use this one a bit later on. But for now we're going to look at this and again with nothing selected, alt and shift click and drag diagonally down to the left or to the right, whichever one you want to do. And I'm going to let go so it's kind of overlapping itself there. And then what I'm going to do is highlight both of these and then come over to the left to the blend tool. And then what you want to do is click on the same point but on the different type. So that corner is the same as this corner on this piece. So I'll click there. Now you can see it sort of adds a middle piece. And what we're going to do is bump that up so there's like 500 of these which makes this line very smooth. So to do this, all you're going to do is double click on the blend tool over here, change the spacing to specific steps, and I'm just going to put in about 500, and then hit OK. Now as you can see it sort of bridges the gap and fills it in nice and smooth. So within, within the, these two spaces is basically 500 copies of itself, which if you zoom in really really closely you can see this sort of like bumpy edge. but it's when you zoomed out this size you can't even see it so we have that and now we're going to need a color for this so we're going to be using the light blue for the main shadow and again we're going to add the next shadows to it so we're just going to again hold alt and shift drag this one down and we're just going to put it to there where it should be like so it's sat on the very top and then we're just going to move it down here to where you put the second shadow before and then again, with nothing selected, Alt and Shift, and then drag this down to the other direction. So I'm going to drag it down to about there. And then repeating the process which we've just done, select them both, come over to the Blend tool, select the same point on the different piece of type. And because you've already used these values, it'll automatically do that for you. If not, then just fill it in yourself. So then what you're going to do is select this, and then using Command and then the square bracket key, just hit that a couple of times and you'll see that it actually puts it behind I'm actually going to just quickly adjust this shadow and it's very easy to do. Once you open the layers here, you see that you've now got your two blends that you've made. So if you go down to the dark one here, I'm just going to select that one so that's the front and that's the back one. So with this I'm just going to come to the direct select tool and click and drag and you can actually adjust the shadows which is quite cool. So what I've done is basically just aligned it here with these points. So now that we have all the shadows finished, we can now add a colour to the main shadow here. So this is actually going to be the darker sort of yellow because the background on here is going to be yellow. So in fact, we'll just add that in now. So we'll just make a new layer at the bottom and we'll fill the background in with the yellow. So now you can see the shadow looks kind of more realistic now, now that it's sat on the proper color. And what we're going to do is drag this back down so it's sat perfectly over the top. Let me just go in a bit closer to just make, make sure. Right, so that's actually a tiny bit lower. So you just make sure it's absolutely perfect. So, fine. Right, so then we're going to change the colour of the front of this to the beige colour which we have, which is up here. So now we have the front, and what we're going to do now is add the darker shadows on the bottom parts here, which would be the darker blue. So we're just going to get the pen tool, and it will lock to all of these points, which is very useful. So we're just going to do this, 
do this. So you need to have a bit of an understanding for where the shadows would go, but it's fairly straightforward. I mean, it'd go on the bottom part, so this underneath sort of bridge area here would have the same. And then same for the E, L, L. And then for the letter O, there's actually um, something you have to take into account. So I'll just speed this part up and then I'll get to that. Okay, so quickly before we do the letter O, I'm just going to change the colour of these so you can actually see what it looks like. So let me just adjust these. So I'm just going to select all of them and sample the darker blue colour. So now you can see it looks like it's actually got a proper shadow underneath the letter. And what we're going to do is finish off the letter O. And to do this, we're going to see that there's no actual corner point on the O since it's rounded. You're just going to follow this up with a pen tool and it'll you'll eventually reach this anchor here. And because we've dragged it down at a 45 degree angle, if you just simply hold shift and this locks to a 45 degree, you see that it leads straight up to another anchor. So we're just going to hold shift, select that. And then we're just going to make sure all the bottom parts completely covered, like so. Now what we're going to do is select the blue shadow at the background for this part. Object, expand, hit OK. And then you're going to come to the Pathfinder uh, tab on the right and then come down to Shape Mode and then Unite. And once all that's merged, you can simply select the light blue and the dark blue. And then we'll come to the Shape Builder tool on the left. And holding Alt, you can now remove the excess part that you don't need. So we'll do the same for the top side and it just goes with the same as what we've done here. If you come up on the inside here you'll see that it actually finds a point and then if you hold shift you'll find that it locks to that one. And then we'll just fill this in again change the colour to make sure it's the dark blue and select them both, shape, shape builder tool and then hold alt to delete the excess. And now we're just going to select both of these and then using command and then the square bracket or control and square bracket if you're on PC. Just going to move these behind the white, oops, move it forward one, there you go. So now you can see that all the shadows are pretty much done from here. Now what we need to do is add the stroke around the uh, front face. So we're going to select the front face which is like the beige sort of colour, command C, command F or control C, control F. And then we're going to swap this to a stroke and make it white. And then you're going to come over to your stroke tab on the right and if, the, if any of these tabs that I've mentioned aren't open like the character tab all you need to do is come up to window and they'll all be on here. So the stroke tab on the right you want to make sure it says align stroke you want that to be on the middle one so that all of the stroke goes inside the line rather than uh, an equal out on, on the outside and on the inside. And we're just going to bump the stroke up to about let's say that's probably let's see what that looks like. You know, that, that looks alright actually so we'll keep it at that. So that's what, three? Yeah. Right, so we'll keep the stroke at about three. And what you now want to do is duplicate the stroke. So Command C, Command F. And we need to sample the darker grey colour, the uh, darker, darker beige sort of colour. So I'm just going to get the eyedropper tool, just like this. Double click and then copy the hex value, which is this number here, number and letters. And come down to the selection tool. And now I'm just going to go back to the stroke which we duplicated, double click on the stroke at the bottom and paste in the hex value. So now you've got this and again I'm going to use the command and then um, square bracket to put it behind the white stroke. And then just using the arrow keys I'm just going to nudge it down with one, two, one, two, so down two and then left twice. And I'm just going to double check over here because if I say if I move it to the left once more and you'll see that it's actually kind of where it doesn't fill here. You can see the uh, lighter beige sort of colour poking through. And again up here you can see how the blue shadow is coming through there. So you want to make sure you make sure it's not doing that on any of the letters. So this looks like a pretty reasonable size which I've done here. So all I'm going to do is make sure that's selected. Come to Object, Expand Appearance. And now you want to make sure you're holding shift and then select the original beige beige sort of colour in the middle. And now with the shape builder tool we're going to just erase all of these parts that are sticking out which we don't need. So just like here. And just make sure you go around and double check that you've actually removed it all because it can look quite messy if you forget it and you miss part of it. 
And now your tank's pretty much finished. There is another d additional element that I'm gonna add to this, but you don't have to add this, but it does, does look quite nice. So what I'm gonna do is create a box and I'm gonna make it roughly the same size as the actual type that I'm using. So holding shift to make sure it's a perfect square. Just make that tiny bit smaller actually. And what I'm now going to do is I'm just gonna make this a little bit of a different color. Get the pen tool and select the two points at the top here like this. So now you have a stroke and I'm just gonna swap that now so it is a stroke and just change the color so you can see what we're actually working with here. And you want these, these lines are gonna basically be going like down, down, down through the type. So this size here, I think that might be a decent, that's, that'll probably be too thick. So about one point will probably be good for this. And now what I'm gonna do is hold, make sure nothing's selected, hold Alt and Shift, click and drag, and now you need to kind of select the spacing that you want. So once you've clicked and dragged it like this and it's duplicated, you can hit Command D or Control D and that'll basically just keep duplicating what you've just done. So you get a nice even pattern. So I'm gonna do this all the way down to the bottom of the square and we need this to be a seamless pattern as well. So that won't be absolutely perfectly on the point. So we'll just delete this bottom one, highlight all these then holding Shift to deselect the square in the background. I'm just going to drag this down to make sure it locks onto the edge of the square. Make sure the stroke's still at one point because now that you've stretched it, it will slightly adjust. So now you have that. All we're going to do is, oops, sorry, with all of, with all of the strokes selected, come to Object, Expand, hit OK. And then holding Shift, you want to reselect the background and you want to erase this half the rectangle at the bottom and again at the top. So delete that and come to the top and delete the half at the top. And the reason you do this is because you want it to be a seamless pattern. So when you use this, you want it to duplicate and duplicate where basically these two half rectangles build the same size as a normal one, like so. So now it looks like a seamless pattern. So once you have this, all you're gonna do is make sure it's the right color for a start. So it needs to be the same color as this inner shadow that we've got here. So that like sort of dark beige color. And then you're gonna come over to swatches at the top. And you're basically just gonna drag this in. Drag and drop. And then you're gonna come back to your type. You can now delete this if you don't want it. You can just simply just delete it. Because now you've got it already in your swatches. So what you're gonna do is come to your type, select the beige color, command C, command F to copy and paste. And then you're just gonna hit the swatch that you've just made. And now as you can see, it actually adds these lines. Um, like seamlessly. So that's pretty much it guys. As always, if you use this tutorial for anything, feel free to tag me on any social media like Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. I'd love to see what sort of results you guys are getting from using my tutorials. It's always nice to see. So yeah, I really hope this tutorial has helped some of you guys and thank you so much for watching.